Hello everyone, this is Lars, you are a casual mech warrior, and welcome to today's First Circuit Podcast number 65. For today's topics, we have the latest of the mechs from Mech Warrior Online, a most recent but tiny hot fix, along with other patch notes, um, more recent sales, uh, the coverage of the No Guts No Galaxy MechCon recap, and a little bit on the Flashpoint impressions. Uh, also along today, we have Biter. Blarg. Ian. Hi, I am no longer laughing. <laughs> okay, and Old Bob 10025 Hey, everyone. All right, stay tuned. Coming up next. All right. Okay. So, uh, first item up for bid here: the new mech impressions are from the Charger and the Hatamoto. Oh, for, for, for the Hatamoto oh, G. I got Hatamoto Reem last G. night for that. What? Oh, for for saying it wrong. Yeah. Yeah, because it's, it's like multiple syllables. So, um, besides Bob and I, who else got this thing? I got the uh, standard packs for both. Okay. Shit. <laughs> Uh, Ian, did you get anything? Shit. I'll no, take I that didn't. as a no. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, so I guess uh, maybe let's just begin with the charger. Um, what do you guys think of it? I like it. I've, I've been surprised how much weaponry people are able to fit in the mech. I did not expect that. I actually sometimes struggle to put a lot of weaponry in it. At least uh, I always have that problem with. Uh, is a bit of energy boats where I want to put as much space as possible towards double heat sinks, and then I realize I only have enough space left for like a few medium lasers. <laughs> yeah, I was coming in along the same troubles too. Um, because usually whenever I attack an assault, I like to get a firepower of more than forty, but um, the ones that have mostly energy, I was only able to to maybe get like a forty point alpha, forty two alpha on these things. Um, the other two that I kind of like, but the energy ones, um, I like them, but I was a little kind of, eh, it, it, they're all right. I like the Charger. Um, I, I didn't think I'd like it, but it seemed to be, be the better mech than the Hatamoto G mech. And um, uh, fitting, the, the, fitting all the different energy hard points was hard at first, but I, I just, I, I copied someone's build. I think it was uh, um, uh, Yo-Yo Dying Games. Just gave me two large pulse lasers and a rest of, and rest of medium lasers and worked out very well. It does, like, I, I have for me about 300 to 700 points of damage around that, like, area. And so it, it worked out good. Now, now the thing is, the uh, I might want to change the double heat sinks to singles and see how that works. Kind of... Mm. Kind of mess around some, you know, like kind of mess around with some different things. But uh, I mean, so far, the charger has been my go-to mech. Yeah, um, I would say, despite my issues uh, trying to build it and the energy loadout sort of being like a, making it basically an eighty-ton in the sphere energy boat, which is something like you already have, like with you know we, with the Black Knight and the Grasshopper. You know, the, these big yeah. in the sphere energy boats are. Uh, not so common on the battlefield, and that's because Innisphere energy isn't in too good of a place right now, at least in terms of the meta. Um, nonetheless, though, the Charger does have some, usually at least, it has some fairly good agility stats, and I found, as long as you're moving and twisting and whatnot, it's actually, it spreads damage very well. Um, in some ways, in fact, um, going along with it being an energy boat, it is actually quite XL friendly, or at least light engine friendly. So you can um not lose a side torso for quite some time as long as you're you know constantly uh, making sure that you're sp you're spreading that damage um so yeah i i i think the hard points um the uh, yeah the mostly energy loadouts is something to get used to and I, in some ways it feels a bit underpowered compared to you know your classic laser vomit clan mechs like why I, it's nice, but if I'm going laser vomit, I'm usually just, if you want to be a laser vomit guy, usually clan is the way to go. Yeah. Um, yeah. The one with missile and ballistic, though, uh, I really quite liked, since that can take a much more varied set of loadouts. You could, you know, put uh, SRMs, streaks, a, even MRMs with, you know, some kind of big DACA or couple of DACAs in the other side torso. So, so 
there's a lot of interesting things that one can do and that can actually shove in a lot of firepower and I'm not stopped just trying to make it an Immosphere energy boat work. But even with the energy boats, yeah, yeah it's, it's a pretty good mech. Yeah, the uh, Charger 1A5, that's one with 480 standard armor compared to the other ones which have about three 320 and the 3K has uh, 358. Um, you It goes a lot slower. It goes the same speed as the um, as the number seven as a hero mech. But, um, just, you know, just like you said, you can spread out different type of loadouts, do different types of things, and just, oh, hey, guys, I'm an energy boat like most other people do. So, um, I mean, I, I plan to use that one a little bit more later on, though, like once the event's gone. So, Bob, if you're saying, you know, 480 standard armor, does that mean what? You're running them stock? Well, I, I run a lot of my stuff stock sometimes to, um, at first. How was the stock um, Charger it, 1A1? It wasn't. Well, I tried it once, and yeah, it was interesting. And then I quickly tore everything oh, off. Oh, the smalls? Yeah, small yeah. Lasers? yeah. I tried it once, man. Yeah. At least I did it. <laughs> you did it. I did it. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, but, but that 1A5, yeah, because you're getting a plus 20 armor on the CT alone compared to the other ones where it's uh, plus 15. Yeah. yeah. And that one's that one's really nice. So I've got a question for maybe Bob and Bider, preferably. Um, with the Charger Energy Boat with large parts mediums, how does it compare to the Grasshopper? Well, the so Grasshopper I use uh, large pulse. I went three large and then all the rest mediums. Okay. Mm -hmm. I went uh, uh... two large pulse and five mediums, and it worked out pretty good. But the Grasshopper does have the advantage of jump jets, and so so you're able to kind of like uh, uh, pop tire a lot. I think um, my little issue with um, these bigger Innisfere energy boats is your exposure profile. Um, the you know the Charger is just that much bigger than the Grasshopper. The Grasshopper's got this tall, spindly frame, so the Grasshopper doesn't hide behind hills very well, but it does side peak fairly well. Um, the Grasshopper, uh, I don't think the Grasshopper has as good as good a shape as the charger in a way its arms are better at absorbing damage but you know in the end they both uh, do their jobs fairly well yeah the grasshopper as bob mentioned does have at least the jump jets allows you to reposition and whatnot but the grasshopper also has fairly decent agility all things considered yeah. uh, which allows it to move forward and back and with its thinner slimmer profile it's better at taking peaks around corners a lot better than the charger is for the most part uh, but the charger's agility is still pretty good on par with the Victor. Mm -hmm. right, so basically, um, for the energy variant, there's not much reason to go off the charge over the crossover. It looks cool. Um, I mean, you're, it you're... looks cool. <laughs> I think I think you're also getting more durability and armor with the charger. But um, personally, I mean, I, uh, this is just from my own my own uh, viewpoint. Is that I would probably do a grasshopper just because. Um, when it comes to doing energy boating, I want to have to be able to move faster, twist off damage, even though the charger, kind of like how Biter did say, you can twist the damage on this thing fairly well. Um, but I found myself kind of being too slow um, and, you know, not enough um, firepower with energy. I mean, it, now, but, but by no means, it's, you know, it's still a very solid mech. Um, but I don't know. I think. I think I think you can find better mechs for for energy. I mean, you know the the like Lucky Seven does have a really cool paint job. The paint jobs are pretty nice, and then if you do the vent, you get a Snowfall one, which I haven't seen yet. But I think Snowfall looks pretty cool, but uh, or at least on the charger. But the um, and plus the arms have really big, gigantic shields, so it does help you mm -hmm. um, in in twisting the uh, um, like all the different damage. I don't know about the Grasshopper. I, I haven't played the Grasshopper for a long time, so so I'll have to check that out though. Like. What, you know, once again. I mean, for me with the Grasshopper, it's one of my go-to standard heatsink mechs. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because <laughs> I, I am not really much of a laser vomit guy, let alone IS laser vomit. So in, in my attempts to try and make something fun and interesting for the Grasshopper, eventually I just said, okay, I'm not even upgrading to doubles. I'm just going to keep it singles <laughs> and just shove it as many as I can. And I, you know, got like 40 extra singles in there or something like that. So Do you make that the old Bob mech? Efficiency. Yeah, yeah, that's old the old Bob, Bob mech. mech. Yeah. What, what is the old Bob mech? It, it's just got uh, medium lasers and single heat sinks, 
you know, filled up to the gills. So it's kind of a, it's an old throwback mech in a way. At least I called it the old Bob because it's also kind of slow and trundly and you know, <laughs> it kind of looks weird to boot, you know, I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, um, but going back to the charger though, um, the, the, the two that I really didn't really, um, try a whole lot yet is the one, a five and the three K, which are the, uh, ballistic and missile variants. And um, I think I think when it when it comes to IS mechs, um, you know, ballistic and missile, uh, I think I I prefer those over the clan variants. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and the and the and the one A five for sure. Um, I've made like a mini atlas out of it. Um, and then the three K, I I wound up putting two medium pulse and a merm forty in that, and um, it, it's 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 fairly fun to use, you know. Huh. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's. So for people who didn't buy the pack, you would recommend getting one of these two. Yeah, I don't mind the uh yeah, the, the I mean I'm I'm quite partial towards IS80 tunners. They're in a very odd tonnage range that uh means they don't see much play, but they're always sort of the plucky underdogs. And for me the charger is that plucky underdog that still has some stuff going for it. The one one A one, the laser boat we were talking about. Um, you know, it has 10% heat, it's a uh, standard laser duration quirk, I think it has now, and yes. it has some really good survival quirks. Like the thing with the grasshoppers, just looking through the list, is they are often given survival to the limbs and maybe a, a torso here and there, but the charger has just got survival across the board. So this thing is tanky, it's got some good energy quirks. Um, it, it, and you know, extra ten tons to work with. The only issue for inner sphere laser vomit is, I'm I typically don't find necessarily that extra ten tons really goes anywhere other than making a light engine or a standard engine build because you know those six to four slots uh, could be used could be turned into heat sinks, and it means mm -hmm. you don't have problems if you lose a side torso. You know, you have uh, problems with managing your heat. My, I think my main issue that I have with assaults is uh, you got to really position yourself because they're so slow. Now, with these two different mechs, the Charger and the Hat, Hatamoto Chi, is that they're pretty quick. And I haven't had really any issues um, as far as like, oh, I'm in the wrong position or I need to move over here. It's just for some reason they just clicked as far as me playing assault mechs. And uh, that doesn't that happens rarely, very rarely for me. So, mm -hmm. so the speed is one major advantage I love about these guys. Yeah, especially on the charger. Um, now, maybe like a quick segue. Um, what are your thoughts on the Hatamoto Chi? Not a big fan of the Hatamoto Chi. Whilst the charger, you can fit in any engine size you want. Like you can, you, I think all of them can go up to well, okay, three eighty five. But um, yeah, four hundred, three eighty five size engines. Whereas the Hatamoto Chi, uh, half of the variants can only go up to two hundred ninety. The Hatamoto Chi is uh, also, at least in my personal view, uh, I'm not a fan of its quirkage. It, it's got the tankiness, just like the Charger, but its shape is much more akin, in some ways, to a trebuchet, where you just got this kind of flat pancake to present yeah. to the enemy. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Uh, which, if they can aim, is a lot harder to spread damage because they're going to try and take out a side torso. And uh, this means half of your weaponry can you know, go away very quickly, which means it's sometimes quite risky to take anything like an XL or a light engine even. The hard points are also very restrictive, or it feels a lot restrictive, more restrictive with... Um, uh, you know, only in the side torsos you got maybe you know ballistic or usually missiles, and that's fine enough. But then the energy in the arms are just—they're low, they're wide, and the PPC quirks doesn't really help. It's like I've got 10% velocity, but I've got you know PPC on one in each arm, and it's—they're firing from you know a different geographical coordinates. And yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> it's hard to line up the shots, and mm. those shots, you know, you you have to have enough white space to your side. And you need to be exposed, you know, uh, high enough so that, that you can actually hit your target. So, and, and yeah, I, I was I was saying, it is sphere laser vomit's not in a necessarily a great meta spot right now. ISPPCs are even worse in that regard, which means a lot of the quirks of the Hatsumoto Chi are dedicated to an even more redundant weapon system. Yeah, um, I'm glad I'm not the only one who was thinking along the same lines as, uh, as that. Um, yeah, because um, whenever I first got got this thing on like day one, I was like, "Ooh, like 
PPC quirks across the board. And then after about a day of trying to work with PPCs, and one thing about, about PPCs and, the, and the, definitely the Hatamoto Chi is that um, one, a PPC weighs a hefty amount of weight, and um, the slot space on this thing is not very forgiving um, when you're trying to use PPCs. So you're going to be running pretty toasty because, you're, because you tend to run out of room for any kind of like double heatsink, uh, you know, like in these things. Um, yeah. yeah, and it's just, and and like I said, that these arms, it, it brought me back to whenever I first got the Roughneck, is that because the Roughneck had these low swinging, large arms, and a lot of times I would line up my shots, uh, with you know, with the like chest missile launchers and try to do a like alpha strike, but then my arm shots might hit the ground when I'm trying to like peek. Um, yeah. So for so for so for many of these, I just didn't really try to build anything in the arms, and I would just try to just um, you know just strip them for tonnage. Um, which also also even before doing that, whenever I was trying to put things in the arms, um, I found them to be um, real, you know pretty frail um, for some reason. You know, that I would try to twist damage, and I found myself losing those arms really quick, just very quickly. A, yeah, a lot of damage does go into those arms, which additionally hurts if you're really trying to do a PPC build. Uh, um, oh, yeah. I think it, yeah, if we're talking about Inner Sphere PPCs, um, the Hatamoto G has one big uh, opponent it has to try and best or equal, and that would be the Awesome. The Awesome oh, yeah. has you know, like 20% heat reduction, 20% velocity, and even heat scale limit for all IS PPCs. You yeah, know, plus you can do... three. Yeah, it, well, that's what I said, um, three heat, heat scale limit, which okay, means yeah. you can fire three heavy PPCs with 20% heat reduction, 20% velocity. What can the Hatamoto Chi do in comparison? Well, it's got wide arms, <laughs> and it can only fire two, and it only 10% heat reduction and velocity? Well... Just on paper, yeah. it's worse on every, in almost every single way. It, uh, just just use an awesome. And not only that, the awesome, whilst it's stuck at an engine cap of 300 usually, 300's a lot better than 290. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah. Th uh, that's the one thing, too, that really killed it, is that, you know, um, now granted, the, this, this is kind of just play style from, from group play to solo queue, but if you take this out in solo queue and you're one of the four or three assaults that, that mainly you're going to have um you're i mean at least i was I, I was not able to tank a whole lot for my team um one because i was too slow so um if my team in pug q had run off i was left way in the dust and got killed immediately um you know and two i just i just i felt i felt really fragile in it then again uh, mostly unskilled because you know first week of having it uh still yeah. skilling these things yeah. up um but i guess my best advice if you're taking this thing out um try to avoid the arms if you can um try to maybe just use the missiles in this thing uh probably my best one that i've been using mostly has been four streak fours on the 27 t variant um four no sorry, four streak sixes and a in a bap and um, I've just been using it just to steal kills. And that's yeah. the <laughs> I've been doing too. I mean, yeah. the sad thing, uh, yeah, as you just mentioned, yeah, I know. It's, like, it's a giant Kentaro. Yeah, but the thing is, but the Kentaro, I think, is it has better, you know, it's better, you know, better quirks, and yeah. better quirks to move around and everything. And so going forward, I, I, I don't know what angle or nit we're going to be able to find with this other than aesthetics what's what's really I, sad is that they have the um you know for an 80 time mech compared to the katara which is a medium so the medium does better uh wise according to your build than the 80 ton one does it just has a little bit more armor and that's it but but i've been finding that like i've been shooting the torsos out um the right left torso is no problem and uh, oh they're they're yeah, wide yeah and that's one of the things that like i've been doing and and it's been knocking them down left and right but yeah, um, but but me. Uh, sorry, go ahead. That's also my impression of the Hatamoto Chi. Yeah. I like it because it doesn't put up much of a fight and looks pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good point. But <coughs> so besides how this thing plays, the one thing, the only thing I really enjoy about it is just the way it looks and the warhorn. 
that they gave yeah. us. <laughs> yeah. I love the Warhorn. Yep. And that's about it. I like it because it's Karita. I like it because it looks Japanese and, you know, like all that kind of stuff. But I would have to say, like, I was wrong when I said, oh, yeah, the, the hot is going to be kicking. But uh, the Charger actually, I think, in my mind now beats beats this mech. So, you know, yeah. plus. You so, know. But, yeah. yeah. But let's just say I, I do have one build for the hero mech. Um, I play tested it uh, yesterday before our stream. It worked. It worked fairly well. Um, I knew I'll be using it probably today after the podcast to see if it still holds up, if it, if it wasn't just a fluke. Um, but I was really enjoying the build I put up, I put on, put on it, and if it really works, I might do a re- review later or not. If it, if it's just a complete fluke and it didn't work at all. Cool. I mean, the way I sort of have been using the Hatamoto Chi is saying, okay, I have a terrible exposure profile, so I have to just push really aggressively. And I'm really kind of slow oftentimes, or, you know, I put a lot of tonnage into weapons, so I'm just holding W the whole time. And, yeah, when I beat the enemy, they obviously, I'm a really obvious target, I'm really wide, and I'm just like, yeah, okay, fine, shoot me, but I'm just going to shoot back, and I'll do my, you know, 400, 500 damage, and I'll fall over dead, and hopefully the team can make use of my steaming corpse. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's been my role with the Hatamoto Chi, is just sort of, I don't know, it's, it's almost very Cretan. It's like, I know I kind of, you know, it's all about being honorable and charging and just, you know, get the job done, but in the end, you know, the whole point is to charge it and get killed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, no, that's, and that's uh... a good, yeah, good Hatamoto yeah, but, Chi. But, but now you're talking about the old Cretan way. Fyodor, yeah. did we form the military? <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> otherwise, though, um, I did ha- the, the most fun I've had with the Hatsumoto Chi has just been the ECM one. Because mm-hmm. uh, that one, I slapped two Snubno PPCs and Streak 8 into it, near two Streak 4s, mm-hmm. and I turned Stealth on and just went, went around with a whole bu- boating a whole bunch of heat sinks and uh, shooting people from stealth. Aha! My terrible exposure profile is a problem if I have permanent stealth. I mean, like, mostly, though, like, I, I've been just popping two Merm 40s on it and then uh, running a little bit of lasers, and that's it. And, um, it's... Yeah, well. it's been okay. Well, so, yeah, so, the yeah. Charger is a solid mech for the most part. It's, uh... Yeah, it, it, it's it's not setting the world on fire, but it's it's got a lot going for it. And the Hatsumoto Chi is it, it's there. Um, <laughs> yeah, I I don't think it's necessarily on the same level as the Night Star, um, but uh, you know it, the Hatsumoto Chi and the Night Star are our best buddies. Uh, hot fix, you guys want to like jump into that? I I like for the hot fix. The best thing I realized uh, I noticed about it is the wording. Like, last time. We had um, where ex- escort was removed for a short bit. It was a whole sentence explaining everything and so on. And this time we just get a single sentence. <laughs> just removed that. escort Oof. game mode from quick play. Yeah, just mm-hmm. poof, and it's gone. Now the a reason is of silence for the quick play of escort. It is now gone. Escort is gone, and one of the reasons is during the uh, MechCon uh, when they had the Q and A uh, for like PGI, uh, one person asked to go ahead and have it like removed because everyone hates it. And I guess Russ took it to heart, you know, per, you know, pretty much like during wow. that time. Oh yeah, yeah. He he looked towards Paul, and Paul looked towards him, and they had that nod, like get rid of it. <laughs> but holy shit, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, during that, um, uh, like during that part. Now, if they, I, you know, I didn't mind it escort that much. It, I, I didn't like it, but I didn't mind it too much because I mean, it's another type of game mode. But most game modes turn to scrimmage, like anyways. Now, like, what do you think can be actually uh, fixed for? For 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 the escort mode. I mean, escort if mode. they plan on, I mean, if they plan on bringing escort mode back, that yeah. is. Yeah. Um, I mean, well, I think during our stream, we had we had multiple ideas and thoughts on it. Um, uh, anyone recall what we had for that? Mostly, I uh, put a human play on the mech, give the mech weapons, yeah. make yeah. the pathing more flexible. But like, all of these are either gonna require fairly big technological overhaul to get a 13th play on the game for well, the team or you or it's going to require AI which is probably not going to happen on CryEngine I was thinking probably yeah. like was there good? I, I mean I agree with somewhat with Aaron Roth mostly which was just uh, guys you're trying to make escort escort work you know like that's the worst thing in any, you know, RPG or single player game where you have to mm. escort the NPCs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, I mean, even in like Battletech, I think we've talked about, about it in like a past podcast. 
that the escort mode is not that great. <laughs> it's just the, yeah, you know. even in BattleTech, the escort mode really sucks. And uh, I mean, in that game, all you needed to do, at least to make it you know more fun, is just give the player control over the uh, APCs. But they didn't. Nope. They didn't even do that. No. Nope. Nope. <laughs> they're just gonna. They're just gonna charge right into the enemy mech's foot and uh, just keep on tr tr trucking through. There's no stopping this train. Well, like two things yeah. they could probably do is uh, one is fix the AI uh, to at least to, like if it gets fired at, like try to do another path or something. Or two is make it a player, but make um, like instead of actually doing thirteen player, do a uh, you know basically one assault mech out of your group is designated the escort, and so everyone has to go ahead and go ahead and. Um, Go ahead and um, protect them. Now, now make it like the slowest guy, and that way, basically, like you know, you don't have like a locust running around or something like that. But you know, make it slowest assault mech, and you gotta you gotta protect that guy, and that's it. You know, that might be an idea to go do that, and then that guy gets an extra fifty thousand or something like that. You know, for being it. Yeah, that would be. I mean, th there's ways you could make it more tolerable for the most part, though. At least, uh, even though they removed escort, I haven't really noticed a change since nobody voted for escort. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No. Uh, except, except now there's more possibility to vote for other things that were chosen regardless. So, And in some ways, as I have argued before, at least in terms of churning out new content, uh, the more modes you have, the more work it, turn, it takes to make maps and renovate maps and all the different modes you have to keep in mind. Um, so getting rid of escort just makes it so much easier to keep track of all the different maps and modes available in the game and to add more maps in the future. Yep. True. Yeah. Now along those same lines, and I kind of had this thought last week too. Um, do you guys think that at this point in time, we have enough mechs to work with that maybe PGI could put mechs off to the side and focus more energy on maps and game modes? Well, they... Ooh. They have the the uh, the mech every month type thing. They gain money, so so I don't think they're going to stop that. They, would, I mean, they won't stop that. But uh, as as far as like enough mechs, I mean, there's a ton of mechs out like out there though. There's a crap ton of it, them. Exactly. Where I kind of came to this epiphany while just driving to work last week, and I was like, man, I have got a ton of mechs at this point, and I don't have you know half of them really skilled yet. Um, and one of the things this community always kind of brings up is, is that they would like to see either more maps or improvements to the maps or improvements to the current game modes. Would there be any other, because, you know, because of course we know they do need to, you know, create some sort of income per month so they can stay in business, which, you know, makes sense. I know, I know I get it. Um, what other ways could they do to get some sort of income but maybe try to focus on other parts of the game that might need focused on. Well, it's a small company, you know, um, yeah. and they're focusing on MechWarrior 5 now. And uh, and then also, you know, they have the monthly income from the mech packs. But that's hard, though. Like, you have to have a dedicated team. Okay, you know, you four people just work on the on the math. But, you know, like, let's say the company only has, like, you know, six different, um, you know, CGI, like, artists. So, like, you know, they would, you know, and they need, like, four of them at least to be on MechWarrior 5. The other two, it's like, okay, well, you two get this done. But it takes them, like, you know, three months to do a map with six. So it's going to take longer for them to do things because they're a small company. Um, I don't know what they can do, to tell you the truth. That would be hard. You know, basically, like, yeah. Uh, yeah. People if, in the comment section. What do you What do you think? Put yeah. it in there. Put it in there, yeah. comment section. I mean, basic, basically, if you reduce the income from the mech packs, you need to make MC more relevant, because that would be the other source of income they have. We'll probably so not I give just, out MC like it's candy. I just don't see what, what how you could do that because, on the one hand, MC is kind of useless because uh, items are so expensive MC wise. On the other hand, if they make items cheaper to encourage player to buy MC. They're gonna be at the net zero. I don't know. It's difficult. Well, they gave out a lot of MC for all the different events, and like you know, like you know, Christmas time you're gonna get twelve hundred. Like here you go, here's twelve hundred, and and then like all the events and everything else. Here's another more, you know, a bunch more for you as well. So maybe lower. And they um, do have. They do like, have constant sales as well, of course. Yeah. That we've been covering <laughs> week after week. Yep. Oh well, yeah, yeah. Tons of sales. Maybe I don't know. I don't just, know. It was just, it was just, a, just a completely random thought. I know it was not really part of yeah. the discussion because I was because I just remembered it. But I was like, man, we got so many mechs now. I wish they would 
you know, look into game mode since we kind of were t- talking about escort, and it was like, could they just dedicate some time to just yeah. rework escort or not, or or do some maps? Map work. We've we've been talking about the fact that Max become kind of stale at this point because every new Mac doesn't really add a whole lot to the game. Yeah, it's mostly different aesthetics. But yeah. I really don't see how PGI can change anything, at least until the MacWare 5 release, when they got more True. resources available. Oh, definitely. Yeah, the, the Macs make the most sense for uh, to justify people opening their wallets, or, you know, bringing out their yeah. credit cards to actually spend stuff, whereas uh, stuff like maps and modes, you don't want to put that behind a paywall or anything like that. Oh, no, never. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah, it's really hard to make justify people uh, to get to bring out their credit cards. Like even with just MC, um, I feel a lot more hesitant to do that than a Mac pack because Mac pack is like, it's almost like a new DLC for the game every so often. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I, I, nothing really springs quickly to mind, at least with how the game is currently run. The best I could sort of think of was something like um, uh, from Hearthstone, I remember like there's a, an arena mode um, where, you know, you, in Hearthstone, at least, it's you. You automatic. You choose cards and make a deck, um, and then play against other players who are also have to make do with these random decks. And you you can play up to. You have three. You could lose three times, but you can also win up to ten times. The more wins you get, the more cool stuff you get at the end. Hmm. So, you know, it's it's kind of like a tournament slash competition. And yeah, you, hmm. you think hey, you have Hearthstone Arena though, if you even if you were able to translate this, like. You choose one of three max, and then you choose between weapon loadout stuff kind of deal. Yeah, yeah. Is the arena is overall net zero, at least from my experience. Uh, yeah. Overall, I've definitely made more gold from the arena than I've spent to do to get in there. Yeah, yeah. The idea, at least, I, I'm. I don't know how much money the arena even makes, but um, you know, if for the sake of argument, Solaris was popular, which it isn't, <laughs> uh, you could do a Solaris tournament mode where you enter the tournament and you have to choose from, uh, you know, a certain list of mechs, stock mechs. And then you play against other players who have to make do with their stock mechs. And, you know, the more matches you win, the greater the reward you get at the end. And that would be something you would have to pay a whole bunch of MC for, for example. And that would maybe justify people opening their wallets. But it's all mute because people don't really play Solaris. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, anyway, so um, going back on, back on topic um, with the hotfix, we also had an, um, an issue with the friend list sorting. So um, the friend list is now in game and they went ahead and they fixed that for the most part. I yeah, still have to go see so, that. So so frustrating. I came online after the patch and opened my friends list and like no one online. That's weird. And then I scrolled down and it just was alphabetical and you had to manually sort it to online every time. It was frustrating. Oh god. But hey, it's fixed. So cool. yeah, that's fixed. I think this weekend I'll I'll check it out more though. Yeah. It's it's interesting hotfix, particularly since they just at the spur of the moment decide to get rid of escort. The rest, though, mm-hmm. it's nice that they're on top of those kind of issues. Um, yeah. I found an odd one. I'm, I haven't seen much talk about it. Um, the ECM Hatamoto Chi only has lower armor actuators, so it can only look left and right. It can't look up and down. Um, though before the patch, for some reason, if you used free look um, left control for me. Uh, mm-hmm. is the automatic binding where you're allowed, you're able to you turn your um, pilot's head and look around the cockpit. Yeah. Uh, you can still aim the arms normally. Um, oh. mm. That was before the patch. After the patch, you can aim normally, even though you only have the upper arm actuators. <laughs> huh. Whoops. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure if it's just because I've done my weird magic where I was making the arms <laughs> weird, weird before and, and then they patched it and now I, I've got super arms compared to everyone else. But, uh, you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. And then, um, then, okay, then also with more patchy patch stuff, um, who here has taken advantage of the stealth changes? Yep. Anyone? Nope. You, Biter. Uh, 
I, I took, well, when the patch came out, I just went through all the IS in the sphere, ECM mechs. It was just like, okay, which one, what kind of stealthy builds could I make for this? Because, you know, um, in the last patch, of course, they gave a huge buff to stealth. It doesn't completely turn off dissipation. It only gives you, like, uh, was it 1.5 heat per second or something, yep. which is yes, still, yeah. it, you know, it, 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 it's firing a, like, a, a medium laser and a half or something like that. Um, so you still have to watch your heat or take a lot of heat sinks. But uh, yeah, um, stealth is still somewhat of a gimmick, but uh, I've been seeing a lot of stealth mechs running around trying to make mm -hmm. it work. Um, I, as I mentioned, the Hatamoto Chi, the one I had the most fun with, uh, was a mech that ran two snub no PPCs and two streak fours with stealth on constantly. The idea being is... Um, uh, streak fours. Uh, people often sort of uh, get confused when they're getting hit by streak. They hear incoming missile and then instantly <laughs> get hit by missiles, and they don't know where it came from. And the snub noses as well. They just they think they're being sniped from long range. So mm -hmm. <laughs> they just you know charge oh. ahead and, and, and snub nose and uh, streak four people, and they they try and run away from the long range LRM and PPC fire. But it's actually me. Um, That's me. <laughs> It's pretty good, except you know, its its DPS is a bit low, and in a straight up fight, which often happens anyway, um, it's outclassed by a lot of other mechs. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Uh, overall, though, I I am um, at least for using stealth. It really opens up the gates to do a whole bunch of stuff. Um, the next one I want to try out at some point is a, a stealth atlas with streak eighteen and a gorse rifle. That should yeah, be able to fight yeah. forever and be incredibly <laughs> stealthy. Like the PPCs are a bit ostentatious, but Gorse Rifle and uh, miss, you know, being hit by streaks is going to be, uh, you know, that already worked before the huge buff. Uh, so now it's even better. And I, I know the one I've seen a whole lot because um, I have not really uh, worked a lot with with uh, stealth, but um, the Stealth Commando, I've seen that oh, yeah. a ton. This past week, and man, they're a pain in the ass. Literally. Yes, literally a pain in my ass. I see the pirates because playing a couple times. Because they work times. really well now, I've seen. I've seen people just, just, just run circles around people in that. I've also seen the locust a lot more, the pirates pain. Because now mm -hmm. you don't have to turn off stealth, so it becomes even more obnoxious to kill in the late game. Yep. Yep, and uh, wolfhounds. I've seen a lot of wolfhounds. Uh, fake assassins, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. I mean, like I haven't used stealth that much. I'm, you know, even before the patch, but I might check it out a little bit now, though. Run a couple builds. Yeah, it's it's a uh, pretty ridiculous now. So like, it, yeah. The I I mean, if you're wanting to use the stealth, it makes it a lot more viable in terms of actually managing heat and you know being able to output damage. Um. The person using stealth still has themselves completely blinkered because their, you know, sensor range is uh, quartered, so they can only see. You know, they only get the red blips 200 meters in front of them, oh. and they don't get any intel, of course, from their allies. So, if you're running stealth, you're often blind to the enemy's movements or how the battle's actually panning out a lot of the time. Like, a, um, so you, you you lose a lot of your peripheral awareness. Um, just for the stealth gimmick, and a lot of people, at least, they don't even need the red triangles to see there's an enemy mech over there shooting me, I'll shoot him back, so to speak. So, um, you know, stealth is still mostly a gimmick. Um, it doesn't necessarily bring you much. The biggest thing that stealth gives is, almost oddly enough, this change is... Um, it removes the counterplay, at least against like lock-on mechs, because you just have stealth on permanently which means the lock-ons, they need a tag to cut through it, or a PPC. Um, which is actually kind of annoying, at least if you're using a streak mech or something, and you're trying to run down a small, you know, like a like Locust Pirate's Bayon. If you kept, you kept chasing him in the previous patch, um, he would eventually get hot in most maps, um, and he couldn't fight back. But now, uh, a whole bunch of stealth mechs can just remain stealthed forever. Uh, which removes a lot of the counterplay because before they were always on the ticking clock. Now they're just less efficient, which means there's a lot less counterplay. And in some ways, at least, ECM was made, you know, a soft counter to lock on weapons. Well, mm -hmm. now stealth is made a strong counter to lock on weapons that, you know, doesn't have the ridiculous drawback 
it used to. Yeah, like for example, I'm actually in uh, testing grounds and I just made a Merm 60 Hadamato Chi with stealth. This, this thing is pretty heat efficient. Yeah, it's not too bad. I think, well, it, those uh, MRM60, it does, does build up a fair bit of heat, but you can still alpha two or three times from stealth. Like, um, you just need to poke a hill with stealth on and, you know, fire your volley, you back off, you turn off stealth, et cetera, et cetera, or whatever. And yeah, you're good to go for two or three volleys where the enemy are a lot less likely to spot you. I might need to go ahead and try this later. This is actually working fairly well. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you got me excited <laughs> now. <laughs> Stealth is a lot more interesting as a gimmick. It is still mostly a gimmick, but it is also a much stronger counter to lock on weapons because you can fight whilst stealthed, which you know, uh, makes up for the fact that ECM was turned into a, a weaker counter to lock on weapons. We got to do a all stealth uh, group on Friday sometime. Uh, we, oh, God. Okay, Bob, Bob, I really, really, really want to, but do you think our group could do that? No. Yeah. <laughs> Organized chaos. Even if yeah. we have Intel. <laughs> yeah, the problem with all, everyone with stealth, I mean, maybe if everyone a brawler mix and you just all charge together um, and it's just rely on pandemonium, but for the most part, um, because everyone's got stealth turned on, you are all blind to the enemy's movements, to the enemy's locations. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the best going going from the Nova game last night. Imagine a friendly fire with stealth. Oh god. That'd be horrible. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, a very interesting change. I don't think in the long run it will affect things too much, but um, at least particularly if you like trying. Uh, interesting builds you know like almost sort of if you're if you're a barador or something like that i imagine yeah. it opens the doors a lot to stealth builds because before it was very much a sort of get in behind the enemy's lines and pop a uav and that was sort of what you could do maybe machine guns maybe but you know yeah stealth is uh you, you got stealth mediums lights hit assaults all of them make a lot more sense now yeah okay so um, the next topic we had up was the um, heat changes with the engine. So I think I was one of the only ones who really kind of noticed it on one of my streams um, is that, um, you know, for, for instance, I was doing a alpha strike. I was uh, writing that heat line. I overheated. And while I was overheated, I lost half my engine. And um, on booting back up, I immediately shut down again and then died. <laughs> so, oh, wow. Yeah. So I did notice it as well a couple of times because I won my uh, street catap um, my, my SRM catapult with flight engine, and like it's noticeable, but it doesn't change a whole lot of stuff. Usually when I lose a side torso, I'm already in override mode and I just charge in and try to get out some final salvos. This change basically makes it that I get out like half a salvo less. It's it's minimal, noticeable yeah. but minimal. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed a couple things, but uh, but not to the extent of uh, Lars, um, where you clipped it and everything. But uh, it was just like, oh, what cold crap! I left a, I lost a torso, back up, hide for a long time, and then come back out again, I'm going to start shooting, especially with like um, and and with the energy max. So I mean, it's it's just like you guys said, it's noticeable, but it's not like the biggest thing in the whole wide world, but it's there. Yeah, I, I think probably the biggest thing is that last podcast, we were kind of confused of the uh, terminology. Um, so now we at least know what it means um, in action, at least. You don't know about the three water bottles? He doesn't know about the three water <laughs> bottles. Women <laughs> people stay high. I don't drink lava. If we supposedly know what it is, can you explain it in terms of water bottles? Yes, yes. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, as far as I'm aware, at least like what we saw in Lush's clip was, um, you know, it, it, it's, uh, because he lost the side tour, so the water bottles were destroyed, but the water in them wasn't, which meant, you yeah. know, he woke up because of the heat, you know, it, it, it figured out, okay, so he should be waking up because, you know, he's below 100%, and he's like, oh, wait, no, the side torso has gone, he should actually be over 100%, and then he went back to sleep. So I, I think one of the main arguments that people have made on this one is that, so in essence, if we're still talking water bottles, um, so, I, so I lost um, a fraction of my water bottles. So you would think by those being destroyed 
the hot water in the water bottles would also go with those destroyed water bottles. But instead, all that hot water <laughs> magically somehow gets crammed into your existing water bottles and they overheat. Yeah. <laughs> they overflow. You can, you can actually change the analogy slightly and make it work. Um, you don't lose those water bottles straight up because your torso doesn't completely get annihilated. It gets beaten up and destroyed, so those water bottles simply burst, which means part of the water flows into the rest of your mech. Uh, and you, you know get what? wet. Like that. Yeah. And you get wet. Oh no! I so is that a thing? If we lose the side torso, you have to say, "Oh no, my water's burst." <laughs> <laughs> so um, okay, so that, that kind of went. Oh, so that kind of explains the new um heat change that has happened that we were a little confused about. So it's uh some better explanation, hopefully, to our water bottles out part there. two. Yes, water bottles part two. Um, so I would say moving on, um, we have events and sales going on now. Um, so we've got some more things to go over for that. Yeah, the event sale goes from uh, the 12th to the 24th. And what's really nice about this is instead of like normally had it for two days or three days, now it's four days because during Christmas time, we're all busy. We got to do stuff. We don't, you know, we can't just jump on MechWare Online every, you know, every single day and do you know, like three or four matches to get this, you know, you know and, and get the next food pellet. Now we have four days to do all these different types of events, and that's awesome. I love that. Thank you. Actually, that's even better. If you look at the 23rd, that one is six days. Oh, oh, oh wow. Oh, really? So they're making it even longer for the over-holiday time, so that's really oh, cool. Oh, wow. That's not and bad. On these, on this, so you said that was on the 23rd day? Yeah. Yes, 23rd. Oh, okay, then that's the new tank... Um, cockpit item so if you missed out on that one you can get it exactly cool i mean that's great that's great they're doing that because like my biggest gripe like one of the biggest gripes like oh god i gotta go go and log in and go do this real quick and it's like i got stuff to do man i gotta i have other crap to do i have to do adulting i just i just need to go do my shopping online and never leave the house and then just hop back in game <laughs> yeah I, I, it's sort of fitting in some ways for Christmas to not have to play every other day. They're like, okay, you might be kind of busy at this time of year. Let's give you some yeah. more time to actually do this event. Now, can we please do this for every event? It makes things a lot easier. Yeah, yeah. Very true. Hmm. Interestingly enough, the uh, December 24th event is four days. So it's only the hmm. 23rd. That's six days long. What's a holiday crog? Frog? Corgi. Oh, oh, okay, never mind. Oh, Corgi. A corgi. Oh, oh. Wait, a holiday Corgi? Yeah, holiday Corgi. What, Which what day is that? that? That's the 24th. <gasps> Merry Christmas, everybody! Oh, the nice. Yeah. Even, they've already, uh, the, one of the days was uh, what, a Christmas uh, pug. Pug. Oh. Um, there's the yellow Christmas bulb decals, and then there's also a gingerbread atlas head. I got that yeah, one. Yeah, so, yeah, so a lot of these decals, I'm they're they're a lot of fun. I like them. <laughs> they're very they're very festive. Yeah, true. Yep. If only I remembered to actually try putting decals on my mix. I just have mm. so many hundreds. I don't really want to start because it might yeah. be, you know, a, a few hundreds of hours before I'm done. Yeah, just loading yeah. them up is. Ooh. Oh. Yeah, it it does take a while to load them. Yeah. So that but being said, though, the, the events go on until the, the last events go on until December 27th. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's your day to play. Definitely. So, uh, Mechmas Mech Christmas sale? Yeah, tons of mechs on sale. <laughs> well, not a ton, but a decent amount. I'm, I'm actually disappointed in that one, right? They had bigger sales in the past. Yeah, yeah. Well, they said it might be like errors, might be like additions as well. But the biggest thing is actually mech, mech base for, for 450 MC instead of 300. That's great. Yeah. That is awesome. If you do have some extra MC, pop that in, get some, get some more, because you can never have too many mechs. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I guess, are there any mechs that stand out for anyone that you think might who? Want the to Raven. Buy, buy Raven. Raven. Oh, Raven. Raven. I've, Raven. I think, <laughs> I think this is the first sale where the Fafnir is on sale. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So if you're looking to buy a Fafnir, the sale is going to be the time. There's Does also this... Nightstar on sale. I highly recommend not buying that one. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say that. There's one you should definitely not pick up, which would be the Nightstar. Yeah. Does this it... include Hero Max? Uh, I... Yes. Oh, it does. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually on the store page right now. Because um, I think they had the Hugin. If you want to get that Raven, that's on sale. Um, also the Hellfire. Yeah, the Hellfire is a good yeah. solid mech. 
Uh, I like the Hellfire. That's a good one. It's one of my favorites. You could get a Direwolf Ultraviolet um, on sale. That one's yeah. really interesting. Because mm-hmm. that yes. makes it uh, more ballistic our points. Yes. More ballistics. I need my eight LB2s. Oh my god, there's a do, lot of mechs on sale. Do not get the Hunchback 2C hero. That, How about the Golden Boy? Boy? I get that one. Uh, yeah. I, I, I wondered why I saw the Golden Boys walking around because they still were using LRM5 loadouts. I was like, why? This is, <laughs> this is such an old loadout and it's so bad. Ooh, this is interesting. The Powerhouse, the Roughneck Hero, that's yeah. on sale. Actually, I want to get the Highlander Hero mech. Oh, the really yeah, yeah. No, no, that's... no, no, sorry, I see it right now. The Inner Sphere, come on, come on. The heavy metal, yeah, the yeah, original so Warhorn. The heavy metal doesn't have the best hard points. But if yeah, it's it's not it's not a great mech. But yeah, it's still, I love it's it. Got, it's got the same kind of hard points as the other Highlanders, just even more awkwardly placed somehow. Mm. Yeah. yeah. But I yeah, love but how it looks, though. So I definitely cool. recommend picking up a Kentaro 18, picking up Urbio 2, and maybe a Fafnir. Yeah, yeah I mean, Kentaro. The, the K9 Urbi. You know, oh, yeah. Police Siren. There's the missile so Irby if you still haven't got that for some reason. The K9 Bishop Steiner's mech. Very nice. I like those mech. Yeah. So there's, I mean, there's not a lot on sale, but I would say what is on sale is uh, pretty decent. There's some decent stuff in here with a small handful of things that are uh, mediocre uh, as a as a whole. So. And we were talking about the Grasshopper. They're on sale as well. Yeah. It's an interesting selection. They're almost sort of the underdog mechs. I think they're trying to push people towards Which them. Which are my favorite. Oh yeah, I, I like a whole bunch of these mechs. The closest you get to better is maybe the Hunchback 2C and the, maybe the Kodiak, session, uh, Kodiak I guess. Uh, the Missile Supernova. Those are the most uh. you know, common metery ones you've got in the whole lineup. Because all the others are sort of yeah, odd, odd, odd ends. Maybe Shadowcat. But, yeah, yeah. And, um... yeah, somewhat meta. The oh, prep, yeah. you know, there's tons of piranhas, and then also the Black Lantern, which is also an- another one of my favorite favorites, is also on sale. Yeah. Hmm. So yeah, so there, there's some there's some decent things in here. Just don't get the Night Star. <laughs> don't get the Night Star. <laughs> Just for that, I'm gonna buy it and play it stock. <laughs> <laughs> and I will laugh at you as you die. Exactly. Well, it doesn't get much better when once you upgrade it. So <gasps> play it stock. But there's a Vindicator on sale. Mm-hmm. That's why I haven't seen a lot of those lately. Wish they would buff the Vindicator sometime. You know, those minor, tiny little agility nerfs. I used to have 80% acceleration. And the Blackjack Never. is now more agile for some reason. <laughs> Never, <laughs> ever. So yeah, so um, sales. So if you want to get sales, guys, um, go out there, check it out. Spend all your hard-earned earned sea bills, especially because you should be getting sea bills with the event. So you can use those C bills to get fancy new X for the month. Yep. Um, okay, and then I think we should probably keep moving on, guys, since we're we're good. we're rolling pretty high on time here. I think. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, who has gone over the No Guts No Galaxy MechCon recap? Anyone? I listened to it. I've listened to it. I mean, it's yeah. one of the usual podcasts. They just talk about what happened. <laughs> they. Yeah, basically I mean, most yeah, of it, yeah. Uh, yeah, most of it was just them talking about like their experience, what they did night before or night after, like uh, you know that kind of stuff. But it was a good. You know, I always liked these guys, like anyways, you know, Bombadil and uh, and Sean. You know, basically very very cool people. Yeah, Bob liked this episode because his name was mentioned. Yes, that too. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, it my name was great. mentioned. <laughs> Ah, uh, that's how it's on the topic list. No, but, but the whole thing, <laughs> the whole thing. No, I'm not narcissistic. But the whole thing is, uh, um, it was just a good, a, a good listen, get a different perspective, of different people throughout the con, and what they had to go through to actually set up everything as well too. So it was good. You guys should listen to it, and I'll leave a link down below too. Cool. Yeah. Um, all right, and then um, uh, one of the anyone... topics that. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. And then uh, has anyone been doing more of the uh, battle tech? The flash nope. uh, yes. I'm going to go back away into the shrubs them. for a little bit. You guys go ahead and talk about that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, no. I finally was no. able to play some play some flashpoints. Um, for the most part, um, I'm not going to change much of what I said last week. If you like the idea of flashpoints, or if you like the max, buy the expansion. If you don't, just don't. It is fairly expensive for what you get. But personally, I do think those flashpoints are really fun. 
in some extent really really well written there's one in there that where that had me laughing the whole time i was reading text oh <laughs> so i i highly enjoyed them especially loads of lore tidbits in there some referring yeah. to the fourth succession war some referring to some lesser known characters you may know from the novels it's good i had, I had a lot of fun I haven't had a chance to, but uh, I do plan to uh, do more of the uh, Flashpoint. I've been just doing the normal stuff, um, you know, doing one-on-one -on -one battles and everything. But um, but I plan to do much more of this kind of stuff, though, later on in the future. Well, as uh, I mentioned, at least the morale system, uh, sorry, the not morale system, the uh, reputation system is a bit of a turnoff for me with this one. And I've, I haven't really progressed much further where I was. So it was like, I want to work with Liao since they're at the center of the map. Oh, it's really hard to be friends with them. Oh, look, the first flash point I've got is against Liao, and it's what I already did at Metcon. And, oh, hey, did you know that that dead uh, hatchet man over there is really awesome? I just want to remind you, says all the people in that mission. <laughs> um, and all the future flashpoints I have to look forward to are the bashing Lao over the head because we're friends. Yay! Yeah. Rip reputation system i get to try and be friends with someone and then have all the flashpoints killing them thanks game yeah <laughs> like uh, i just did a flashpoint for house Kurita against house devian even though i was already allied with devian so the, the reputation thing is kind of weird i that, give it that i i feel in at least some ways i like the re previous reputation system because hey i'm a mercenary i do any job you know as, as long as you're willing to pay me why are you getting so upset? <laughs> well, they did if, add if the pirates as jobs, well, too. Yeah, if you gave me jobs, I would, I would, you would be so upset at me. But guess what? You didn't give me enough jobs by random, you know, random number generators. Mm -hmm. So you're you're going to be upset with me. Yeah, I, I like the idea that uh, your actions actually change your reputation to some extent, but I think it's slightly overdone. So I'm, I would probably tune it down a bit once I figure out where that value is in the files. And speaking of modifying the files, um, the Battletech mod loader has finally been updated for version 1.3, which means all of your mods should now be available. And most of your mods should be straight up compatible with 1.3, the only exception being those who change game constants, which is like one out of 20 mods. So if you play it with mods, now's the time to pull out your previous campaigns and continue them. Yeah, I think um, the biggest thing for me is just if they changed uh, what kind of contracts they were willing to give you. If, if for example, let's just say you're, there's the whole mercenary review board um, reputation thing that is a separate XP bar you're gaining. If you are a really well-known mercenary group, even if you're absolutely hated by the pirates, they would still want to offer you the mission because they know you do get the job done, so to speak. Same with a lot of the factions. No, um, Ian. Sorry, yeah. good. And go on, like better. As it is right now, I I forget. I I think that all that board uh, mercenary review board thing does is a uh, is restrict what mech warriors you can recruit, and that's about it. Whereas it, it, you know, it just seems odd. Like I'm the most in the end, if I grind enough, I'm be I'll be the most well known mercenary company. I can do five star, you know, five skill missions easy peasy, but I can only do it for two factions because all the others are too stuck up. <laughs> Now, Ian, um, like, is it so you can only use medium max in the flashpoints? Um, depends on your flashpoint. There are some that have a tonnage restriction, but even those I've gotten around it so far because flashpoints obviously have choices. So I always choose the mission where I had to go straight up assault something, and then I just played my four assault max and called it a day. See, the problem that I've always had a well, the problem I always have a problem with with uh, with BattleTech is. Um, that you have all these cool mechs. Yeah, you got the hatchman, but I can't use it eighty percent to ninety percent of the time. And so, so like you know, like even if I got my my hatchman with my uh, with my normal streaming um, battletech campaign, I just it'll be sitting in my mech bay doing nothing, you know, and for for about ninety percent of the time. And so, if they, I don't know how they can fix that as far as like bringing certain types of mechs instead of like, well, actually, probably just do like tonnage restrictions for all the different uh, um, can, you know campaigns that are out there. Or, or all different um, um, like encounters and everything. It, but, it, but, yeah. Go it ahead. comes down to the same thing that came down before. Um, how much do you want to immerse yourself in the game? Like, of course, you can pick the choice if you have to play with medium max. Of course, you can pick medium max if the mission is something where you have escort, for example. Mediums are really good for escort. It 
it's basically the player's responsibility to pick it his max. Yeah, if yeah, I guess he so. If he doesn't want to, then you can do it all with salts. But it, obviously it's, that's um, not all the fun. I think it's always just gonna be a problem with these um the fundamental game mechanics just encourage bigger max. They always just much better on yeah. paper. Yeah. So it's always almost always I think you know people mentioned MechWarrior uh previous MechWarrior games, uh, uh, you know, it was always just building a bigger and bigger alliance. Mm -hmm. uh, there wasn't much point too much in keeping the smaller mechs around. Yeah. Um, in, in terms of Battletech, yeah, it's really difficult to make it so that the smaller mechs are relevant still. Flashpoints are an attempt at that. I mean, a more complicated solution might involve something along the lines of um, being able to drop multiple lances or having to arrange much more complicated um, uh, dropships. So yeah. there's only so much tonnage you can take to the ground so quickly. So therefore, there's a reason. Like if you had a small, very fast dropship, that would get you, you know, very quickly to the ground, and you could instantly put down on the ground a lot of light mechs. Whereas the assaults, it needs a big, huge, heavy dropship. It costs a lot more money. You have to actually acquire the darn thing, and then it takes a while to slowly chug its way along and drop the assault mechs off, which would give you reason to have different drops and this, that, and the other, or something like that. Yeah, yeah, true. I um like that's my only biggest pet peeve about BattleTech was like, oh yeah, I got this cool spider mech, and I'll, as soon as I get all my mediums, I'm like, well, what the hell am I gonna do the spider or the locust? Like, whatever, <laughs> and he just gets sold really quick. Did you actually just say cool and spider in one sentence? Yeah, I you know you know I'm just giving an example, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Whoa. But but you know what I'm talking about though. It's, it's like all those yeah. like other mechs are just either in my mech bay. Uh, or, or like you know, like you know, like stowed, you know, stowed away, or sold instantly because I need the money. Well, at least the spider isn't a cicada. Poor yeah, cicada. Well, Poor cicada. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> sorry. But Flash points it out, and uh, uh, you know, I think it's worth it. But I'm a BattleTech freak, so it's a little bit different for me, I guess. So next, uh, what's next on the list? Um, oh, this. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, so uh, <laughs> that means free swag. Um, if yes. you log on on the 27th of December, um, we're getting free max. Free sea bills, free yeah. stocking stuffers, MC, a whole bunch of cool stuff. So guys, definitely, if and this is a good time to actually make a secondary account or a third account. Just to, like, if you just want to have those max, like in your new account, go ahead and do that. Yeah, so December 27th, just log on, play a game, get free swag couple. Bit later. Yeah, and again, you're getting a new uh, Warhammer 2C and a new Corsair uh, mech, each with their own special paint job. And and remember, guys, it's, 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 not, it's not even that you have to win the game, you just have to play it. So even if you're yes. on the go, install the game on your laptop, just log in, get into a game, horribly die, and you get the stuff anyway. Who's going to horribly die? Well, if you're on your laptop, you're probably going to horribly die. Okay. <laughs> yep. yep. Get on, yep. equip only flamers, knock, and tag, and charge into battle bravely <laughs> in a Hatamoto Chi, maybe. Go down in the of glory. Exactly. So Take doing. away until people know you're going to die. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> so next we have Larsh. And Larsh, I'll let you go take it from here. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Okay, so um, for those that are watching right now, um, this is going to be on Monday. So the next um, upcoming Saturday, I'll be hosting another charity stream, kind of like how we did last year. Uh, last year, we had a 24-hour uh, charity stream, that, uh, and the proceeds had gone to the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation. Uh, we're going to do it again this year on the 22nd. Um, now, granted, I'm a little bit, a tad bit more busy than I was last year, so I can't do a full 24 hours. Um, so we're doing a 12-hour stream uh, beginning from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, that is on the uh, Eastern Standard Time. Uh, last year, we were able to raise roughly, I think, about right over $600. Uh, so we're going to see if we can beat that one out. Um, but either way, it's going to be for a good cause for the, those of us who have Crohn's and colitis. Uh, you'll be helping the foundation, and you'll be helping me stay alive to play more games and give you guys more content. <laughs> um, so yeah, so uh, that'll be on my Twitch channel, and um, I hope to see you all there, either in-game, on the stream, or in my Discord.
Yeah. What, yeah. The what time does it start again? Time wise? Uh, eight eight a.m. Eastern Standard Time, going to eight p.m. EST. Okay. And plus, is it busy? Is it that you're busy, or is it the twenty four hour one almost killed you? Um, a little bit of mix of both. <laughs> um, I mean, I really enjoyed the twenty four hour stream. Um, but uh, that was just like it was just dead the day after. Um, this one, uh, I am a tad bit busier since, um, I'm, I'm still taking care of my grandmother, uh, from her stroke, um, earlier in the year. And that is going to be an ongoing thing. So I go yeah. to her house, um, almost every other day to, uh, check up on her. So it wouldn't be good to go like half dead myself to go ahead and make sure she's, she's, uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so yeah, so, um, so 12 hours, um, all, so a good half day on Saturday. Yeah, yep, okay. so be, make sure to uh, not miss that holiday bonus on the 27th on Necro Online, and may also make sure to not miss Lush's stream. If you miss both, I think you need to condemn yourself to a few hours of Fallout 76. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a risk uh, damn. That's oh, bad. God. Bob, you still playing that? I don't, no comment, man. No comment. <laughs> I'm, uh, yeah, oh, God, it, it, it's hard for me sometimes to play that game. So what do we learn, people? Do not pre-order shit. Yes, don't pre-order yeah. stuff. E well, unless e even you know if you're a it's fan, be good, like because like BattleTech, I pre-ordered I pre that on the well, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, basically, I'm not going to pre-order a lot of Bethesda stuff anymore. I'll I'll, I'll tell you that for right now. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, lesson learned. Anyway, guys, uh, thanks for tuning in as always um, of the episode 65 of the First Circuit Podcast. Uh, there will be no podcast next week because holiday and uh, partially because of the live stream for uh, the Crohn's and Colitis. Uh, this has been Lars, your casual mech warrior, and make sure to find all of us on the uh, Twitters and YouTubes and YouTubes and Twitches. Uh, so go ahead and say goodbye, Bita. Goodbye, Baita. Perfect, Ian. Goodbye and happy holidays, everyone. Yeah, and old Bob one zero zero two five. Happy holidays, everybody, and uh, nice to, to have you part of the community. All right, guys. Yeah, thanks for being here, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>